Hi there, it's Nicole Sport, and today I am sharing a die cut birthday card featuring the Spellbinders large die of the month for September 2020 called Have Your Cake. This is an incredible die set that will make this cake and you can switch out the words to spell or say what you want to say on the greeting card, which I think is so super clever. I, of course, wanted to do rainbow layers in my cake, so I am going to big be dot in creating that folder, on which my I'm card so today. excited about. I am and I this went ahead awesome and embossed that off camera on a four by five and a quarter inch panel of Cool Pool cardstock. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the embossed cardstock to my white top fold card base. I have found when I am using these embossed backgrounds, it just gives it so much more of a stable surface to attach your die cuts to because it's textured. And I find it kind of wants to curl up a little bit. So I like to go ahead and adhere that directly to my card base before building the cake. Now I made like a horrible critical error right off the bat building this cake. Um, it's tipped to the side and you can totally see it in the video, but of course when I was working on it, I did not see it right away. So I went ahead and put strong adhesive underneath um, this piece of cake here, the outer piece of cake. And then I went and put liquid adhesive under this delicate piece and right and and even the top and right away I was like oh no and I did not want to have to die cut everything again luckily I was working pretty quickly and so I peeled everything up and we're going to be able to hide anything that may be going on underneath that so I actually did not have to re-die cut anything so I think it's always important to note in my videos and in my blog posts and things if there's something that goes wrong. So hopefully that helps you guys when you're working with your kits at home and your dyes at home because I wasn't even thinking. I was completely concentrating on something else. In fact, I was on the phone while I was doing this and it shows. So you kind of want to line up that bottom corner and make sure that seam that middle seam where these two pieces meet is straight. If you do that, your cake is going to be perfect. Don't line up that outer edge on the left, which is what I was doing before. Don't, don't do that. You want to line up that middle seam. If you line up the middle seam, everything else is going to be straight too. So there's my little tip for the day when building this cake. There is also make a wish and happy birthday to you. Those are the other sentiments that you can do. Now they're not gonna be as long as this one, so you're gonna to have to repeat those sentiments, but I think that looks really, really cute. After I went ahead and built the cake base, we're gonna add in our rainbow layers. I have all of the little kind of white frosting is what I'm considering it for the greeting. And for all the background pieces, the rainbow pieces, those are different colors of Fun Stamper's Journey cardstock. I have listed all of those out on my blog, and I've also linked to each of the individual colors if you're curious at all. I love the Fun Stamper's Journey cardstock. They have a huge array of colors, um, and they work really great with the Spellbinders dies. Any dies, but I often use them with my Spellbinders dies and you can see how pretty all of these are. I definitely went for a pastel rainbow for my cake, and I'm using some acrylic blocks to help hold everything down and flat while that liquid glue is drying. I just love this so much. I think it's so incredibly cute and fun. Something else to keep in mind, maybe you don't want to add the die cut words for the cake, you don't have to. You could do anything else here that you want, add a glimmered greeting, you know, underneath the cake or somewhere else or a stamped sentiment. You would not have to necessarily use the dies with this cake if you don't want to. And I love that about the Spellbinders dies is they often are so versatile that they can be used in a lot of different ways. The fruit can be used on its own. It could be used um, 
you know, for all kinds of other cards, really, really cute fruit images. Strawberries, like an orange. You could also make it a lemon or a lime. The cherry and the carrot. Very, very cute. Okay, now we're going to take some Simon Says Stamp Doll Pink ink and we are going to just kind of deepen and darken the bubblegum die cut frosting pieces. Gives them a little bit more texture because that ink is going to kind of hold on to the embossed and raised areas of this. So I'm really doing a very, very light inking with my blending brush. And I'm going to sugar the frosting pieces with Nouveau Crystal Drops and White Blizzard when I'm done with the card. Um, I always love those decorative cakes that have that kind of sugared icing on them. Um, I have a horrible sweet tooth that I really have to fight against. <laughs> so um, there's a little fun tip about me and I always have loved these decorative cakes like that. Now the little frosting piece that goes on the top of this piece of cake has a die cut little uh, slit in it so you can easily tuck the cherry if you wanted to, candles if you want to. I'm going to do a candle here today, but isn't that fun? I just love everything. Spellbinders thinks of everything. The carrot does, so you can tuck the greenery into the carrot. The cherry does as well, so very, very thoughtful creative or creating here with the Spellbinders Club Kit. We're gonna add our little candle in the frosting dollop on the top of the cake piece. We're gonna add these two little pieces here. When I adhered them, I only put a tiny line of liquid glue right along the bottom so that I would be able to tuck the fruit underneath the top edge of that frosting. So there is the carrot. You can see I've just stuck the top of the carrot through here. I'm using a pair of craft tweezers to kind of help hold on to these pieces and position them right where I want them to go. For many of the fruit pieces, I, in fact, I think all of them, I die cut two of each. The carrot's the only one I think that I didn't end up using two of, and I can just save that for another project or for another card. I will have lots more Spellbinders projects. Well, I say lots, um, just for whenever this one comes out, but um, I have four videos this month. And so there will be more of, you'll see more of these throughout. Here is, I made a little orange slice. So I used two different shades of orange cardstock for that. We're just gonna piece it together using some craft tweezers to help hold on to all those little pieces. I just love the rainbow layers of the cake. It looks so good. Now for the strawberry, I actually opted to not layer cardstock behind it. But if, because I'm gonna use some Nouveau Crystal Drops, but if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, you could just go ahead and adhere that to like a black piece of cardstock and then cut around it before adhering it to your card. And that will give you the same kind of look. I'm gonna have a little grouping of fruit down near the base of the cake layer and another one up near the top and I'm working fairly quickly. I had all of my pieces die cut and ready to go. Because so many of these pieces are fairly small, I really knew I was probably gonna need to use liquid adhesive, which is not forgiving. If you're, um, you know, have glued it down and you come back a little bit later, it's gonna be pretty well stuck. So I had everything ready to go and so I could just start the assembly and get it going. And that way, if I needed to tuck things back behind or maybe just shift it a little bit, the glue was still pliable enough that I was able to do that. It's one of my best tips for when working with lots of die cuts 
for a complete die cut card like I'm sharing today is to plan your card and have, if not all, most of your die cuts ready to go and kind of do it assembly line style as far as that goes. Have your plan for your card, have your pieces all die cut, have your background either stamped or embossed or if it's glimmered, whatever it might be, and then have everything ready, all your adhesives and all of your pieces, and then do all of the assembly. It really does speed up the process so much. I was able to die cut on this project over parts of the day, um, mostly because I was working on something else as well. And so I would kind of, I die cut some pieces and I would lay it out on my table and look at it and think, what else do I need? Do I want to do, you know, more fruit? And that way I really was able to kind of reevaluate and get all of those pieces so I had them ahead of time and it was very easy to put together. We are gonna tuck one more little cherry down here at the bottom of the cake before we do finishing details. So now if there's any little pieces popped up that need extra adhesive, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna add the stripes to the candle. I can't tell you how much I love this little candle. It's such a small thing, but the candle is so super fun because it has those great little stripes. We're taking a white pin now and adding some little white pin detail to the fruit. We'll add the Nouveau crystal drops, or yeah, the gloss drops here to the strawberries for the little seeds. And then we're gonna finish our card with a scattering of little star funfetti that is in the same pastel colors as our rainbow cake layers. I love little funfetti pieces. Um, I think they're really, really cute and fun. And I love that the colors really match the rainbow cake layers so well. I also want to take Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard. So I mentioned earlier in the video that we're going to sugar the frosting. This is how I'm going to sugar it. And I added it to the tip of the candle so it would be sparkly. And then I'm not actually covering the entire frosting pieces. I'm just kind of tracing around the outside edge to give it that little touch of sugar. This also is gonna dry really, really fast because we've put such a light layer of this on. It's not a big glob. I see a few extra places. I think I need a little white pin detail and I need a little extra glue. I'm using this Ranger multi matte medium with a fine tip applicator on it, which I love to use when I have delicate pieces to glue down in place. And then we're gonna add little dabs of glue here and there. And you can use an embellishment wand or some tweezers, whatever you wanna use here to pick those up and pop them in place. I usually try not to use my fingers cause I tend to smear the glue, but going to add a whole bunch of these fun little stars throughout to help reinforce the birthday theme of our card. And you can also see I have another pair of tweezers helping hold down um, one of these little die cut pieces that has liquid glue back behind it. It just helps it. If, it, if you're having trouble with things popping up, I will often use a pair of tweezers to, to kind of help hold that down until the glue starts to dry. We have just a couple more little stars to add and our birthday die cut card using, using the Spellbinders Large Die of the Month for September 2020 is all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for another die cut card featuring Spellbinders Club Kits. This is the September 2020 Have Your Cake Large Die of the Month Club Kit. The supplies I used to create this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Spellbinders Club Kits that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.